Hi, welcome back to Chem with Chem. In this session, we're going to be working question two from Chemistry Paper 2 of the January 2020 sitting. If this is your first time to the channel, please check out the other materials that we have. And if you like, if you find value, then leave a thumbs up, please share with your friends and consider subscribing and turning on post notifications so you can be alerted each time new material is added. Now let's just delve right into it. This is a redox question. So we get a chance to not use any calculators. We can just relax for those who don't really like the numbers. All right. When oxidation and reduction occur together during a chemical reaction, the reaction is described as redox. Redox, meaning oxidation and reduction are taking place at the same time, not redox, the brand. Some substances can act as oxidizing agents while others act as reducing agents. The equation for the redox reaction between aqueous copper two chloride and aqueous iodide is given below. Two Cu2 plus aqueous plus four I minus, that's iodide, aqueous ions to give two copper iodide solid and iodine in aqueous medium. Define reduction in terms of oxidation states. Now oxidation and reduction can, can be defined in four ways, but we want to define reduction in terms of oxidation state. So we'll just get right into it. Reduction is the decrease in the oxidation state of a substance. Part two, deduce the oxidation state of copper in copper iodide. All right, so let's look at, let's single out copper, um, copper iodide. It's an ionic substance, so we'll have to look at um, rules, some of the rules for assigning ox oxidation number. Now, in an ionic compound, the sum of all the oxidation numbers of the elements present is equal to zero. So iodide here, like all the, hal the, hal the, um, the halides when they're in compounds, ionic compounds, their oxidation number is, when, they're, when the halides find themselves in binary compounds, binary metal halides, then the their oxidation number is negative one. So it means then whatever the oxidation number of copper is, when we add it to the negative one, when we take the sum of everything, we should get zero. So we're saying X, whatever the oxidation number of copper is, plus negative one is equal to zero. So what must we add to negative one so we can get zero? So our answer would be positive one. So we write plus one. So the oxidation state is plus one. Please note that for oxidation state, we write the sign before the number. And for charges, we write the number before the sign. Even though you'll see in many textbooks, you'll see it being used interchangeably. This is the correct sign convention. All right, define part three, define the term oxidizing agent. And in our definition, we're not going to, we don't want to say about the word oxidizing, all right, or oxidize. So we'll just say exactly what it is. It's a substance that accepts electrons from another substance and is itself reduced in the process. So it's called an oxidizing agent because when it accepts or gains electrons from another substance, that other substance in the process becomes oxidized. It's a transfer of electron process. So those electrons are not coming out of thin air. They have to come from something. So it's like in accounts, to every debit, there's a corresponding credit. Money is going somewhere and money is leaving somewhere. So the oxidizing agent is what will accept those electrons. And when the oxidizing agent accepts the electrons, the oxidizing agent itself becomes reduced because reduction can also be defined as a gaining of electrons. All right. And oxidation can be defined as a loss of electrons. Oil, oxidation is loss. Rig, reduction is gain. So let's just get that definition for oxidizing agent in. Part four, with reference to the equation above, state with a reason which substance is acting as an oxidizing agent. Now, to really get this well, it's best if we assign we're we um, recommended to assign oxidation numbers to all the species that are present on the left hand side. So this is our left hand side of the equation, writing in blue, and this is our right hand side, RHS. So we're going to be looking to see 
which of them in moving from left to right would have undergone would have undergone um, a decrease in its oxidation number. And then from our definition above in part one, we said that reduction, reduction is a decrease in the oxidation state and the oxidizing agent is itself reduced. So we're looking to see which species would have undergone a reduction in its oxidation state or would have experienced a reduction in its oxidation state. So we have um, Cu2 plus, so the oxidation state would be plus two. We have four I minus, um, the oxidation state for the iodide there is minus one. Now let's look at what is happening over the right hand side. The copper in copper iodide, as we stated earlier, the oxidation state is plus one and the iodide itself in copper iodide is negative one. The iodine there is elemental iodine, though it's in the presence of A plus medium, presence of water, it's zero. So in looking from, moving from the left to the right, we realize that um, only one species, species would have undergone uh, or would have seen a reduction or a decrease in the oxidation state. And that is the copper two plus ions. Its oxidation state decreased from plus two to plus one. So that means the CO2 plus is our oxidizing agent. So we're going to state this given the reason. So we'll say so CO2 plus is oxidation state decreased from plus two to plus one. So it was reduced. So CO2 plus is the oxidizing agent and would have gotten full marks for stating that. Part five, solution A was added to a small portion of an aqueous solution of potassium iodide in a test tube. The colorless potassium iodide turned brown. State whether solution A contained an oxida oxidizing agent or a reducing agent. All right, so let's, um, let's try to visualize that. We're given a test tube which contains A plus potassium iodide, which is colorless. And then um, solution A is added to um, this solution of potassium iodide and the potassium iodide changed from colorless to, to brown. And we should state if solution A is an oxidizing or a reducing agent. Any change that occurred in the potassium iodide solution would have been brought about because solution A was added. All right, so to begin with, potassium iodide is a reducing agent. So in the presence of an oxidizing agent, then we're going to get a characteristic color change in our potassium iodide from colorless to, to brown, as was stated in the question. So it means therefore that solution A then would contain an oxidizing agent. Explain your answer in A part five above. So we're going to just summarize what we just said um, a while ago. We probably were um, answering part um, six while we went about the explanation just now. So we're going to state that potassium, aqueous potassium iodide is a known reducing agent. And we're going to give its oxidation state and state what happens to it when an oxid oxidizing agent is added. Aqueous potassium iodide is colorless and it's a known reducing agent. And in aqueous potassium iodide, the oxidation state of the iodide is minus one. So when, when the iodide in potassium iodide is oxidized, which is brought about by whatever oxidizing agent is in solution A, then the iodide is oxidized from negative one to zero, giving elemental iodine, which gives the solution the brown appearance. And they want us to write a balanced chemical equation to show the formation of the brown product. The brown product is iodine in the presence of aqueous medium. And persons might be wondering, but sir, iodine is a dark purple solid. But the iodine that is being formed here is being formed in the in, um, aqueous medium. So it would be it would be brown. 
All right, so we're going to um, write what happens would have um, iodide I minus aqueous to say it's in the presence of it's in the presence of water. And we're going to, so this is a species that we have. And then this species now is going to be losing electrons. Electrons is going to be taken away from it. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So electrons have a negative charge. So if an electron is being removed from I minus, it means that we're going to end up with I in the elemental state without a charge. And of course, this would still be in aqueous medium and we're going to have the electron that was lost. We're going to have that being available now because as we said earlier, it's a transfer of electron process. But of course, this process happens a second time because we could not have I, elemental I by itself. Anything that ends in in or gen is diatomic. So when this process happens a second time, we would have the formation of I2, but we would need two iodide ions and we would get two electrons or two moles of electrons being, um, being liberated and available for transfer. Some books will show you two I minus minus two electrons, but the, the best convention or the correct convention is to do it like this, where we show for loss of electrons, we show, we show the electrons um, on the right being liberated on the right side of the arrow. So we'll have the species and uh, we'll have what happens after the electrons are lost and we'll have the final species plus the electrons that are liberated and are now ready to be gained. All right, so that's, that, that would give us two more marks. Part B, when a piece of zinc metal was added to an aqueous solution of copper two sulfate in a test tube, a chemical reaction occurred as shown in the equation below. Zinc solid plus copper two sulfate solution to give zinc sulfate and copper solid. Now, um, I, know, I hope you've noticed the, the nature of the question so far. If you've done labs related to these questions, then all the better. If you haven't done so, you can check out the link below or the card above for a lab that is similar to this, where we looked at um, the reducing ability of uh, metals, except that we did not give the names of the metals. We had them as A, B, C, D, et cetera. So this is um, displacement, but in displacement, redox is taking place. It's actually a redox um, process. So we're asked to describe what is observed with regard to the chemical reaction that occurs in the test tube. So um, first things first, let's look at how things are at the beginning and then, 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 let's, then, let's, then let's look at whatever changes are taking place. So the zinc, as we know it, zinc is a gray solid. The copper to sulfate is a blue solution. Zinc sulfate, is supposed to be colorless. We'll address that in a bit. And the copper solid would be a pinkish brown or a pink, yes, pinkish brown solid. All right, so let us look at what will happen. Um, as the reaction progresses, we would expect to see our gray solid dissipating, which is the zinc. So the gray solid, the strip of zinc metal, the gray solid, which is a strip of zinc metal would dissipate the ISSI. Also, as the reaction progresses, the blue solution would actually decolorize as Cu2 plus ions are being reduced to give us elemental copper. So the Cu2 plus ions in aqueous medium is what's responsible for the blue appearance of the solution. So as the copper ions become reduced, then we'll have the blue solution decolorizing. So it's a the blue solution decolorizes. And of course, for the formation of the solid, the um, copper, we would expect to see pinkish brown pinkish brown deposits, pinkish brown solid deposited or deposits at the, at the bottom of the test tube. All 
and that would have given us full marks. That would give us full marks. Part C, one of the substances in the equation in B on page 11 is acting as a reducing agent. Describe a simple lab laboratory test that could be used to identify a reducing agent. Now, if we have a reducing agent, well, for a, for a reaction to be called a redox reaction, oxidation and reduction must be taking place simultaneously. So if we have a reducing agent, or we suspect that um, a species is a reducing agent, then we need to test it with a known oxidizing agent that gives a characteristic color change. So we could use acidified potassium manganate 7. Same thing we call um, potassium permanganate. Um, we could use acidified potassium mang um, acidified potassium dichromate 6, right? And that is orange dichromate. Acidified potassium dichromate 6 is orange. Acidified potassium manganate 7 is purple. So let's just look at um, one of them. And you can, all, you can just make a note of the, the other one. So what we would do, we would test the, test the suspected reducing agent with a small amount of acidified potassium manganate. Seven solution, if the substance is a reducing agent, then it would change the acidified potassium manganate seven from purple to brown or to colorless. It doesn't always go from purple to, to colorless. Sometimes it stops in between at the plus four oxidation state where we get Mn, where we get uh, Mn with the plus four to brown or to colorless. So let's just get this down. And just like that, we would have gotten two more marks and a total of 15 marks. And this will take us to the end of this question. So thank you for joining Kim with Kim. If you have not um, subscribed, please consider doing so and turning on post notifications so you can be alerted the moment we upload new material. Be sure to share the video with your friends, leave a thumbs up. And again, thank you for joining. Couple later.